Welcome to the Acrylic Character Teeth Workshop. There's an intro video on making acrylic character teeth, so please watch this video carefully before you make character teeth yourself. We'll be covering a lot of information in this video, everything from sculpting, to casting, to pouring acrylic, to making the gum material. And also included in this video is a step-by-step -step instruction on making your own T-shade guide. To start off, you need to make a mold of your actor's teeth. So the materials you're going to need are alginate, plaster, measuring cup, alginate spoon, spatula, one tablespoon, a quarter cup, and a mouth tray. The mouth tray will be used with the alginate only. To measure out alginate and water, you need two parts water to two parts alginate. Alginate comes in two types, normal set and fast set. Here I'm using a normal set dust free alginate. When alginate sets, which takes anywhere from one minute to five minutes, depending on the type you got and how cold your water is, it becomes a rubbery substance and it lasts anywhere from four hours to ten hours. Afterward, it starts drying out and shrinking. Remember, the colder the water, the slower the setting time. After you've spatulated your alginate, apply it to the mouth tray. This may look kind of thick to you, but this is a good consistency so that you don't have it running down the back of your actor's throat. Make sure the tray fits the mouth before you apply the alginate to it. See how I put my lip over? This is so that the alginate will seep up through the gums and help to give a good gum line. To remove the alginate and tray, you use your index fingers, push down firmly. Try not to separate the alginate and mouth tray. If you do, you may have warping of your plaster teeth and then the acrylic character teeth may not fit the actor. For the plaster, tablespoon of water to a quarter cup of plaster and mix. There are different types of plasters on the market. You have UltraCal, HydroCal, and different types of stones. Right here I'm using a HydroCal white plaster. It sets fast and gives fairly good detail. Pour the plaster onto the roof of the mouth tray and let it seep into the teeth holes. This will keep from getting air pockets. If you do get air holes, you can patch it with a little more plaster and smooth it out with a brush. Plaster takes anywhere from half an hour to two hours a set, depending on the type you use. Try to avoid using Plaster of Paris. It's a very soft, fragile plaster, and it's not very effective for this type of casting. Nice high gum line, perfect for what we need. Welcome to the Acrylic Character Teeth Workshop. Today we're going to start off with a mold of our actor's teeth made from alginate and plaster. You need to make sure that when you're casting the teeth that the mold is, will not warp through pulling it out of the actor's teeth. If the alginate pulls away, you'll have slight warping of the mold and that won't work and you need to redo it. So we're starting off with a good mold and I have a display here of the teeth that I've made in the past for actors. They're made out of dental acrylic, pink powder and regular acrylic powder for teeth shades. We will begin with the mold. Starting it off with the sculpting of the, the teeth and then making the acrylics. Sculpting the clay teeth, step one. Materials you're going to need are an oil-based clay, 
sculpting tools, brushes, and petroleum jelly. Before you get started, it's always good to have an idea of what type of character teeth you want to make. I've decided on making some buck teeth. So what I do is I pinch off a little bit of oil-based clay, shape it into a basic flat teardrop, and set it on the table before me. I like to make about six teeth. This is a basic smile that most people have, and it'll cover the teeth very well. Since I'm doing buck teeth, I have larger teeth in the middle, and then the two side teeth are smaller, and the far teeth I try to blend into the actor's teeth. Apply a little bit of petroleum jelly to the plaster teeth just to seal them and to help the clay to stick to it better. Press the clay onto the plaster teeth where you think they'll look best. As you see here, the far teeth are blended into the plaster teeth. Take your sculpting tool and start feathering the clay into the plaster teeth. This is where your gum line is going to be, so you want it very close to the teeth as possible. There are different sculpting techniques as there are people that do sculpting. So choose what you like to do and if you see anything here that looks good, Try it for yourself. Here I'm using a sharp tool to cut in the teeth. After you've got it to a basic shape, now you can get rid of the lines on the teeth that you've made with the sculpting tools. I'm using a stiff brush here with a little bit of petroleum jelly on it, and I'm smoothing the teeth out. Some lines are good depending on the type of teeth you make. Here I want these teeth to be smooth and natural looking. And then I take a softer brush with petroleum jelly and smooth them out even more. Finish the inside. Some final touches here. Now I have fingerprints on the clay, so I take a brush again and wipe them away. Now we're ready for the next step. Casting clay teeth, step two. Alginate sticks very well to plaster, so it's good to seal the teeth before you apply alginate to them. This alginate water mixture is going to be a little soupier. Remember, clay teeth aren't as strong as people teeth. And if you try to press clay teeth into a very thick alginate, you'll find that you may warp the clay. 
and not make the type of teeth you desire to make. So I've made it soupier. Still, alginate sets quickly, so work fast. When you press the teeth in, be careful not to touch the bottom of the tray or the sides. And you may have to hold the teeth up until the alginate sets. Make sure all the clay is covered. Now when you remove your clay teeth here, Try not to damage the alginate mold because you'll be using this mold again in a few minutes. That's a good mold. All the clay teeth recovered. No air pockets. When you think you've got it right, you can peel your teeth off. If your mold didn't work, you can cast these teeth again. You may have to do a little touching up. Use a wood tool to clean the clay off. You don't want to damage your clay teeth. Also to clean it off a little more, I use non-acetone or acetone or isopropyl alcohol, whatever I have around. Making the acrylic teeth, step three. The materials you're going to need are acrylic liquid, acrylic powder, non-wax paper cup, petroleum jelly, and sculpting tools. The reason for the non-wax paper cup is because the acrylic you're using may react to the non-wax paper cup, so it's good to use non-wax. Pour as much powder as you think you'll need into the little cup. Remember when you pour the liquid, a little bit goes a long way, so please use it sparingly. That's a good consistency right there. Work quickly, depending on your room temperature and the type you use, it can set very fast. Again, I'm pouring it onto the roof of my mouth and letting it seep into the teeth holes. This will also eliminate air bubbles. Sometimes I'll even scoop a little bit up and press it onto the teeth. This isn't always a factor in it, but sometimes it helps. When you press the teeth in, if acrylic squirts out, that means you got enough in there. Now allow the teeth to set. Acrylic takes anywhere from a half hour to two hours, depending on the type of acrylic. Be careful not to damage the mold again. You may have to use it again if these teeth didn't turn out. Sometimes the, the acrylic teeth stay in the mold, sometimes they stay on the plaster teeth. Gently remove them from the mold if they didn't stay on the plaster teeth. There's a good set. If you get air pockets in your acrylic teeth, you can clean the holes out a little bit. Take a brush, dip it in the liquid, dip it in the powder, and fill the holes. Here I'm using a Dremel tool to clean off the teeth and make them look smoother. If you don't have a Dremel tool, you can also use a nail file. Just be careful not to snap the teeth as you sand them down.
Well, we're halfway there. So far, we've sculpted the teeth in clay, casted them in alginate, poured the powder into the alginate with the liquid mixture, pressed the teeth into it. After it cured, we pulled it out, made ourselves a set of acrylic teeth. Now for the gums. This process is going to be a little bit more tricky. I've found some ways of helping me to eliminate some of those expensive steps of buying fancy equipment. And this is what I'm going to teach you now. The pink powder gum material is basically the same as the powder that we use for the acrylic. You have the powder and the liquid. What we're going to do is we're going to also add a little bit of the jet to the powder so you have a two to one ratio. And what that does is that pulls out the froth and makes it hard just like the acrylic teeth look. So that's what we're going to do right now. And you use the same liquid. See those holes right there? I didn't fill them before I started this. Now this is a crucial part because we're going to be putting gums over it. So to make it comfortable for the actor, I'm going to fill them with clay. So then I don't have to sand them off later. Seal the plaster teeth again. There's my pink powder mixture. The liquid. A little cup for the liquid. And an eyedropper. The technique I'm showing you here takes a little practice. But with what I'm showing you here, I think you can catch on quite quickly. Put a little powder on the teeth, and then add a little liquid to it. You do it in sections so that the powder doesn't run off the teeth. Add a little powder, add a little liquid, and keep going till you're finished. Try not to touch the liquid powder because it dents the gums, and then they may not look natural. And be sure to overlap the pink powder liquid mixture over the acrylic teeth. To make the teeth look like they're coming out of the gums, I'll dip a soft brush into the liquid and then push the gums away from the teeth a little bit. This is a, an effective way of making the teeth and gums look natural. To speed up the curing process, I use a blow dryer. When the teeth are cured, take a sharp tool and pry the gums away from the plaster gently. Now I take my Dremel tool again, and I start smoothing out the gums. Remember, the actor wearing this, you want them to be comfortable, so you want to smooth them out well.
Here I'm making a notch for this flap of skin underneath your lip called the frenulum. Now at this step you can seal the teeth or you can paint them with an acrylic water-based paint. I use browns and yellows depending on the types of stains or colors you want on your teeth. The more coats you put on the teeth, the shinier they look. It's very effective in making the teeth look wet and alive. The sealer I'm using here is called Jet Sealer. Here are the teeth completed. Teeth shade guides and making your own. Here's a standard teeth shade guide you can purchase. And here's the teeth shade guide I'm going to teach you how to make now. With an oil based clay, just as before, pinch off a little bit of clay, shape it into a basic flat teardrop. Instead of putting it on plaster teeth, you're going to stand them up on a table. I'm doing three shades, so I've got three teeth out. Now, put a box over the teeth, because you're going to be pouring alginate over the clay teeth. Remember again, the alginate is soupy, so it eliminates air pockets. Once the alginate sets, remove the mold. And to get the teeth out, you push on the top of the mold and pop them out and grab them. Try not to use any kind of dental tools or anything to pull them out with because you could damage your mold. Remember, alginate is soft and easily scarred. Here are the three shades I'm using. 59, 65, 77. To remember which hole I poured them in, I'm going to write them on top of the alginate. Mix up a small amount and pour it in the proper teeth hole. So I can attach it to a key ring. I'm putting a paper clip in each one before they set.
Now that it's set, I'm pulling them out of the mold here and inspect them because they may have air pockets, they may have odd shapes to them and this is a good opportunity to sand them and make them look professional so that you can seal them. I also like to write on each one so I know what shade I used. And there's your teeth shade guide. Teeth are dry. They look pretty good. Let's try them in. Now you go make some teeth.